Oh, what's going on? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's going on, everybody? I'm Johnny Brook from Crafted Workshop. Welcome back to episode number 43 of the Crafted Podcast. Podcast all about making stuff by hand, woodworking, metalworking, leather, electronics, and more. We put out new episodes every Thursday on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, pretty much everywhere podcasts are available. We also live stream every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Love to have you join us over there. Uh, just search for us on YouTube, Crafted Podcast. You'll find our channel there. And we live stream there. You can chat with us through the YouTube app. It's a great way to kind of interact with us live and get your questions answered. And we also have some social media accounts. We're at Crafted Podcast on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Feel free to ask us any questions on those platforms as well. And tag us on Instagram in your listener projects. Also, one huge help is to rate the show on iTunes. Give it a five-star review. That really helps us kind of get in front of more ears and kind of help spread the word about the show. Last, we are on Patreon now. We added a $250 goal to add a weekend show every week. That's patreon.com slash crafted podcast. We've got tons of support levels there. Weekly after show, monthly hangouts, that kind of thing. Our top patron of the week is Make, Build, Modify, and we have no new patrons. So come on, y'all. Get on it. So uh, let me introduce my co-host as always. We've got James Wright from Wood by Wright. What's going on, James? Oh, not too much, but I am enjoying life right now. Thank you so much for having me. All right, and we've got Zach Herberholz from ZH Fabrications. What's going on, Zach? Not much. Just uh, eating some uh, meatloaf with some bacon-flavored ketchup that we bought in Nashville, and it's like the best invention ever. Hmm. It's incredible. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Nice. Yeah. Bacon ketchup. That sounds yeah. delicious. Nashville Jam yeah. Company. Good stuff. This week, man, I got I to gotta buy the Zach Snacks jingles on Fiverr. <laughs> I need to – it's just like – it's become a thing. You just need to embrace it. And uh, yeah. That's... <laughs> Could you, you actually play some? You said, Dude, you well, it, but... yeah. So I got to figure that out. I, I know. Uh, you need to get more... a soundboard where you can you know, push a button and it comes out. Well, yeah, so. You just play it through your speakers or something. Well, I, I mean, you're... Google Hangouts has like a little control room button, but I'm not the person running the call. Oh, so yeah, I should look that up. Yeah. So, because I mean, like, obviously, Wood Talk, that little Shannon's industry update jingle is hilarious to me so i wouldn't mind adding that uh, that, that would be pretty good so uh james you want to kick us off what you've been working on man yeah well I, we actually um in the shop not much at all um we we kind of did a mini vacation with the family and went down to uh, missouri for the eclipse mm. and uh, that was absolutely phenomenal so we we kind of made it a, um, a couple day thing it was five hours down and nine hours back because for some reason, everyone decided to go home at the same time. Millions of people. <laughs> yeah, that's a, uh, how was that full totality down there? Yeah. Yeah. We had uh, a little over two and a half minutes. Um, and it was, it was absolutely incredible and, uh, something that everyone should, should do at least once. Yeah. Yeah. We weren't in like hundred percent totality. I don't think here in Asheville, but we were like high, high nineties. So yeah, it was pretty next, crazy. Next time you've got to go totality um, completely yeah. because it's, it's, it's just one of those weird things when, in, when the actual shadow comes over, it is absolutely incredible. So was it like total darkness or did it, it was, it was about the same light as you would have on um, your brightest full moon. Hmm. Wow, man! Wow. Is, yeah, it, yeah, it's it's dark. You can see the stars and everything. Man, see, it uh, wasn't quite at, that. At peak, you get this uh, this sunset all the way around at three sixty degrees. It's just it was absolutely incredible. That's nuts. Yeah, I just sat on my uh, my front steps with my Lincoln welding mask on, and <laughs> <laughs> I was like completely because I was right in the middle of building these chairs, and you know I was already a day behind, so I certainly wasn't going to take the day. But that I know. Uh, I wonder how many like metal fabricators listen to the podcast, just slam their fists on the table and said, it's a hood. Yeah. A <laughs> yeah, I know. I always make them like, a snake. They're like the knife, the, the knife, knife nerds that Jimmy that's talks funny. about. Yeah, that's true. I don't even know why I called him. You know, it's funny because I had been calling a welding hood, but then I like was Googling around about the eclipse to make sure that the hood would protect my eyeballs and people kept calling it a mask. So I was like, well, 
I don't know. But yeah, anyway, it worked pretty well until the eclipse was actually happening. And then it was like not bright enough to trigger because, yeah. you know, it's one of the auto triggering masks or hoods. And uh, so <laughs> I had to like hold down the test button for like 15 <laughs> minutes because it kept just turning off and like obviously it was incredibly bright. So um, yeah, it was, it was kind of funny. I probably looked like a moron, but it was pretty cool to see through the, through the, mat, through the hood. Yeah, it was it was kind of cool because I actually got to take our, our kids down there for it, and uh, that's awesome, they, man. They, it, it was it was kind of I wasn't expecting them to have any cool reaction to it, but they they actually went all wild on it, and it was it was something that really kind of blew their minds. Yeah, I bet it was bizarre. I mean, even here, you know, it was probably like dusk, basically. You know, it was uh -huh. not like completely dark, but you know, like the temperature started dropping, yeah. and the crickets came out. It was like really. Weird. It was very odd. Um, yeah, very odd. You start to see the the birds doing odd things and animals poking up here and there, and it was just like, yeah, <laughs> it is a kind of a cool experience for sure. But so everyone uh, watching, you have seven years to wait for the next one. So yeah, it's what twenty twenty four apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. the next one's actually going through Maine. So if if everything yeah, it goes comes from uh, the Gulf and the, yeah, it's like the northeast, the other yeah. diagonal. If if uh, if everything goes as planned, I might be close to it this time. Nice. Oh, it's, it's definitely worth part. the drive. If you're within twelve hours, go for it. Yeah. Well, we were. Uh, <laughs> it was kind of kind of suck because we were in we were in Nashville, which is like in the total zone for the Dewalt thing, and then like our plane ticket was out the day before the eclipse, which <laughs> also happened to be uh, Tracy's birthday. So like, yeah, I just felt like a really bad husband. <laughs> <laughs> better planning like everybody's coming into the city to see the eclipse and it's their birthday and we're leaving like right that's before. hilarious that's hilarious yeah i just didn't want to deal with the traffic honestly i am so averse to traffic i'm just I'm like i don't well, care what's school, happening we've gotten an extra night but we were already taking the kids out of school for one day so it was yeah yeah man that's cool yeah, well so nothing really else, nothing else in the shop just the eclipse <laughs> Yeah, well, actually, I did get a little bit of word working done. Uh, most of my time I spent kind of planning what I want to do with the back wall and where I'm putting tools, but I'm I'm getting ready to do the last step on the bench, which are making the, the two leg vices for it. And I'm also doing the, I'm putting together the plans for it. I've had a lot of people asking me for the plans for the woodworking bench. Um, so hopefully that will be coming out in the next uh, week or two. Nice. But it's going to be a, a really heavy um, plan with a yeah. lot of a lot of other information, a lot of options. So I <laughs> nice. to putting that together. Yeah, dude, but, the wall looks awesome, man. That that really you, you are looking super legit in yeah. front of that wall. It is uh the lighting is on point. I am I'm, I'm a little envious. I need to step up my game. <laughs> well that and I'm I'm about to buy a uh, GH uh, GH five. Nice. Um, sink a couple thousand dollars into that and a few oh. lenses. Nice. I'm even thinking about getting a uh, a sliding rig, so we'll see. That would be cool. Yeah, that uh, that would be nice. I'm I've I've considered it. I actually, funny enough, I bought a drone for the uh, Dewalt event just to try it out because you know I'm I'm gonna return it, but um, just to see what it was all about, you know, because you know everybody, it seems like they use the drones with the GoPros and stuff like that, but using it with a full on DSLR, even though it's just a mirrorless. Dude, my forearms were on fire after like a six-hour session of holding that thing. I mean, the footage looks great. I mean, it looks like I had a tripod set up. You know, it was like perfectly stable, really smooth pans. But uh, yeah, that, that thing must have weighed like 10 pounds and just holding it up, you know, the tops of my forearms were feeling <laughs> it, feeling the burn. But uh, yeah, that, I was thinking like that would almost be a way to substitute a slider though. Uh, you could just use the gimbal and handhold it and kind of walk side to side and not have to go through the pain of setting up a slider. Yeah. Uh, that that would be. But I'm like, I'm wanting to do a, a sliding shot while I'm working on something. So I have to. Ah, like a sliding time lapse kind of thing. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Cool. Zach, how about you, man? I see you got a video out. Yeah. Awesome. It's about time. Um, yeah. Exciting. Yeah. That was. Uh... I was uh, anxious to put that one out. It's it's off to a pretty good start, but it's it's kind of fading quick. But uh, how did you move it? 
That is my um, question because that thing must have like legitimately weighed yeah. like four hundred pounds. It was it. It, it was definitely down. heavy, yeah. but it's not as heavy as you would think it is. I mean, it's not huh. light. I mean, it's uh. Fortunately, it fit. The guy that that uh, bought that, he's actually the same guy that I did the um, farmhouse or the uh, prison doors, the sliding doors for. Um, but he lives up in Daytona Beach, so he. Drove down for that, and uh, there's three oh, of us. Oh, he picked it up? Yeah. Nice. So, That's awesome. Yep. I, I mean, As much as I love my old truck, I, I'm not quite <laughs> ready to drive that further than like 40 miles from my house. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, it fit in the back of his truck standing up. He's like, should we flip it over, take the top off? I'm like, no, let's just lift really hard and put it in the back of your truck. It'll be fine. It's not going <laughs> Yeah, there, there's no flipping that thing over <laughs> accidentally unless he like flips over the truck. It would have been really, I mean, like this sounds terrible, but it would have been really interesting. I, I'm just imagining like a, a car accident with that thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just like it, it would have been fine. <laughs> the, the table's nice. Yeah. yeah the truck I mean, would have been destroyed. The table would have, would have survived. <laughs> Like whatever hit him is just bounce off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that thing was no joke, dude. But it, it turned out the paint and the finish just looked super nice. That was uh that went really well. Yeah, I'm, that was I think that might be my favorite build so far. Um Yeah. I was kind of sad to see that one go. And if I knew if I were gonna be staying here for the rest of my life, I'd probably have built one for myself, but I don't want to move that across the country. <laughs> so. No, definitely um, not. So yeah, it's been crazy. I mean, I uh, well, you were there for a lot of it. Um, so we had Oklahoma, and then we had. Then I went to Jimmy's place in upstate New York, and then we went two days later. Went to Cincinnati to hang out with my wife's family, and then two days after that, Nashville. And then I got back, and I had to get the deadline on that X table that uh, that's on my Instagram. Yep. So I was like. I was pretty much, I was out of town more than I was home the past month. So like I, I built that table, that double X table, which hopefully that video should be out soon. Cause it's, I delivered that two days ago or yesterday. I can't even remember. It's all, it's that all turned out really good too, man. That was yeah, great. That one, you know, that that's one of those tables I was building. And I'm like, man, it's just not, it's not there. It's not right. It's not right. And, um, I can't remember if I talked. Yeah, I think I talked about the turnbuckles in the last podcast. Oh, the turnbuckle yeah. made it, man. I, I think so, really too. That was that. it. Because I was looking at it when I just had that piece of all thread that went all the way through yeah. it. And I was like, man, it's just not. It's missing something. It looks It looks like it's not cohesive. So yep. Yep. It, was, it, was too, um, it was too shiny, too. It was the, the all thread was zinc coated and everything else was steel and kind of that walnut color and the. The zinc was just, I mean, it's like a white, you know, or steel is kind of a like gray ish. The zinc yep. is just like two. So I blackened that and welded up pretty much fab that turnbuckle. And that I think really, really brought it together. Plus I haven't posted the picture of it yet on my Instagram delivered. I have a picture of it in my shop, but um, it looks so good in their house. I, I posted some stuff on my story about their house that they designed. I don't yeah. know anything about it, but they have a really cool setup. Yeah. It's, that uh, like crazy chandelier over it was pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. was it? Yeah. They, they had like the electronics and. Oh yeah. The all wire. the automation, like the uh, Philips U stuff and all that. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was crazy. I didn't know how cool that was. What's the. Oh, dude. Yeah. There's something called like sonar or sonar or not sonar, but something similar to that. It's like this wireless sound system. That's oh, Sonos. Their, yeah. Sonos. Yeah, man, it sounded like a club in there. It was insane. My parents have that. It is, yeah. Home home automation had, is like one of the things of I'm excited about. Yeah, they my had parents. Three of those things. It was crazy. <laughs> well, it's cool. They have one in the office, like on their bottom level, then a couple in the main room, like on their second level, and then a couple upstairs. So, like, literally, they can go anywhere in their house and have the same song playing, and like, it's completely seamless. It's really great for parties and stuff like that because then it like just kind of carries the the vibe of the mm -hmm. party throughout the house. It's really it's a cool setup. I, I wish so I'm like a huge Apple guy and Sonos is kind of annoying because you have to use an app to control it. Um, and I wish 
Apple from your phone, you could airplay to multiple devices at once. That would, I'm guessing with their new, they're coming out with kind of their own speaker to kind of rival Sonos. Mm. Uh, but uh, anyway, I'm, I'm totally nerding out on the home automation stuff lately. I'm, I'm considering <laughs> like making my second channel about home automation just because I've already got a Nest and like the Haiku fan and want to add a bunch of other, like the, I have a couple of video doorbells and uh, kind of want to, you know, geek out the house, but anyway. that stuff was that. Yeah, it was really cool to see, but I don't think I'd want any of it in my house. <laughs> the problem I have is my internet's not good enough to support most of it. Like yeah. I, I can't load the video feed from my like ring doorbell because my bandwidth is not strong enough. <laughs> like, yeah. The only thing I would want, I think, would be the um, the Philips Hue thing was pretty sweet. So like all the it lights is. are on like different circuits. This totally sounds like an ad. <laughs> <laughs> this is like one of those like non ad Yeah, no. <laughs> but uh, like each one of them was set up different. And he had a, I had on my Instagram story like it had like the Keller wheel, Keller <laughs> wheel. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. Dude, John Malecki says Keller just like you. Really? I swear you have a PA accent. I don't know if your like family is from Pennsylvania. But man, you sound so much like Pennsylvania people to me, and that's what like I initially thought. And the more I listen to him talk, you know, he's from Pittsburgh or lives in Pittsburgh, and he every time it's like Keller. It's huh. hilarious. We, yeah. we have a lot in common. I haven't I, I haven't I talked know. to him for a, <laughs> a couple of weeks, uh, but um, but no, on the the Keller wheel on the phone, you can like just slide your finger in and whatever wherever your finger is, like that's where yeah what color the lights will be okay i need to change subjects i'm getting sick of saying that <laughs> yeah we've got um, that upstairs in our living room and fireplace room yeah it's pretty cool between uh, that and uh a, a controllable thermostat uh, i love that because you know like when we we're gone this weekend i basically turned off the furnace yep I mean, we we're at the rest stop about three hours away i turned everything on and brought it up to temperature it really is pretty amazing. Home, everything was cool and ready to go yeah it's funny because like, so, like we're kind of backwards on that part because I would love to have a house where like the thermometer is how much wood I have in the wood stove. <laughs> <laughs> and they call me the hand tool guy. So I know, right? <laughs> my ceiling fan is controllable via app. And so yeah, we have it's, one it's the one in my bedroom. And dude, there is, <laughs> it is incredible how useful that is. Like, it's like, ooh, that's just a touch too high and I don't feel like getting up out of bed. <laughs> just being able to change that is amazing. It, uh, it's one of those things where I thought was totally stupid, but it's awesome. And it connects to the nest. So if it's like, you know, the AC is on, it'll turn the fan up to help circulate air. But um, anyway, this is not a home automation podcast, but <laughs> um, it's pretty sweet. And it was cool. Pres- yeah, yeah. Presumably most bad. of us have homes since woodworking is kind of hard to do without one. So. <laughs> I'm a homeless um, woodworker. <laughs> yeah, what, else? Yeah. what else is new? Um, I think that's it. I mean, I got that, that table delivered after a lot of long nights and kind of a time, time cram. And now, now I'm like, I just can't wait. And today I spent the whole day posting my videos everywhere and, uh, uh, getting everything edited, my website, newsletter, all that stuff. So that kept me busy. And tomorrow is the first tomorrow. I'm going to ship out all of the shirts that everybody has been waiting for, for a week or two, just cause I've been out of town. But other than that, tomorrow I'm, I have nothing. It's my first day of like nothingness for, I don't know, probably a couple of weeks. I'll probably clean my shop because it needs it really bad. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that's that's about it for me. So I guess for me, uh, put out the modern Adirondack chair video today. It's doing pretty good. Um, really happy with the way those came out. I was kind of debating on on whether to paint or clear coat the cypress. And I think it looks pretty good uh, with the clear. I, I think it would look fine either way, but I put up a post on Instagram and like overwhelmingly uh, got clear coat as the response. So I figured why not go with the clear coat and I already <laughs> had the clear coat on hand. So free is better than spending 50 bucks on a gallon of paint. So, um, so yeah, that, that went out uh, today, Wednesday. So if you missed that, go check that out. I do have plans available for those too. If you want to build some of those yourself, uh, going to be starting on the DIY plywood sofa tomorrow, which should be pretty interesting. So I've never, never done upholstery and 
kind of found so when i was in portland i've mentioned this before i found this cool plywood sofa and i'm kind of taking some inspiration from them as far as how they did the cushions and i found this awesome article in wood magazine on their website on how to upholster a cushion around like a piece of plywood as the base for the cushion so uh, basically you like round over all the edges and then cut the foam at a diagonal on each side so it kind of nicely tapers into the edges and just kind of wrap it around underneath and staple it so that'll be kind of interesting uh going to joanne fabric which is always a, a weird you know Make it's sure like you take your coupon i know it's it's like it's <laughs> i'm assuming what like a knitter feels like going to home depot you know it's like <laughs> a world of things that i don't know about so um yeah the coupon is essential at joanne though it's like michael's never pay full price for anything at either of those stores but anyway so uh yeah i uh excited about that i think that should be a cool one um and i'm trying to make it a super simple not tool intensive build like i am my plan is to only use a circular saw router and a drill and a jigsaw so Ooh. just some basic handheld tools uh you know trying to <laughs> i could do that too if i had one of those i know trying to trying to avoid all of that crap so uh <laughs> hopefully that should go pretty well um also booked my flights uh, i'm gonna go out and do a collaboration with chris salmoni in october nice. so that's gonna be fun really yeah really excited about that going out there for like five days uh, i guess we'll really only have three days in the shop but hopefully him and i can kind of knock something out we, I think have, I mean, he is a much better, way, way better designer than I am, but, uh, we have similar styles as far as like what we like. So, uh, I think that'll be pretty cool. We've got some, some ideas, but, uh, yeah, so that'd be awesome. And then last, I'm going to be a speaker at workbench con, which is this event coming up in February. It's February 22nd through the 24th in Atlanta. Uh, definitely recommend checking it out. We'll have a link in the show notes to the website. Uh, it is chock full. So this is like a traditional conference. This is not like go stand around and look at the new tools from Powermatic or whatever. This is like go attend seminars, learn a bunch of stuff and go home and apply it to your business. So uh, I think the idea is similar to the Haven conference that's been around for a little bit, whereas that one's more focused towards like DIY bloggers. This one is more focused towards kind of woodworker content creator kind of people. So um, should be really awesome. Ben Ueda is the keynote speaker. Chris Alimony will be there. Mike Montgomery, Bob Claggett, Jimmy DiResta, uh, Brad, Rodri Brad Rodriguez, John Malecki, a whole laundry list of dudes. So uh, it should be, should be pretty cool and a little bit intimidating. Got to go uh, speak there. I've got two one-hour talks. So uh, go attend and ask me some good questions at the end so I'm not <laughs> stuck up there with no questions. So, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for me. Uh, so <laughs> we're a little unprepared for this episode, to be honest. Uh, so we kind of have just reached out to the audience for some questions. So it's going to kind of be all over the place. Uh, but, uh, that's, you know, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so let's just work our way through the list. And, you know, if you guys ever want to have your, an your questions answered, you know, again, hit us up social media uh, at crafted podcast or join us in the live chat. That's like probably the best way or support us on Patreon. So, uh, all right. So first Richard Johnson says he loved Zach's table. Uh, and Zach seems to use Ash a lot. Any particular reason why? So, I think I know the answer to this, but Zach. <laughs> it's cheap and it looks good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Florida. Um, well, no, I mean, I, I've, I've always liked ash. Um, it's very similar to oak. I mean, it's, I feel like it usually has nicer figuring than oak. It, uh, I mean, other, not, I mean, there's like, you know, quarter sawn white oak is a totally different breed, but, but, you know, your standard, uh, plain saw and oak. It's it's similar. I feel like it's a little bit less porous typically, and uh, it always takes dye and stain well. It's not like a, a pitchy wood, so it's just it's hard and it's heavy, but it's relatively easy to work with. Sometimes it doesn't plane so well, but uh, you know, usually if I'm doing a glued up tabletop, I'm not doing a ton of that. I'll you know 
cut it pretty close and uh yeah so it's it's kind of one of my go-tos it's it's just always it's always available where i'm at and it's uh easy to work with it's a fairly forgiving wood too it's yeah. it's not something that's even with hand tools it's not something you're going to be messing up easily it's fairly easy to get through without tear out yeah yeah and it's really easy to read the grain there's not a whole lot of yeah. reversals and it I seems mean, to take stain really well too that, that yeah, seems to just, be you know some a lot of woods that are oilier or have pitch or have you know little pockets of stuff in them uh can can kind of blotch and make you know absorb things yeah. unevenly and well like have, maple it's a total pain to to stain and it's it's yeah. pretty cheap in my area but i would if i had to stain it i would never use maple i i <laughs> i use maple on the um that power usb table that i did the conference table but yeah i mm -hmm. used a dye stain on it so it was aniline dye yeah uh maple maple is too like most maple is just so plain or there's not a ton of contrast between like the early yeah. wood and the late wood so you put stain on it and it just all turned it looks like paint so you need yeah. something the dye kind of sinks in it different different things for different materials but but ash is always been good to me so nice yeah it's funny i've never worked with ash it's kind of like on my it's on my list i just have this huge pile of walnut that i've been working through for you know gotten it i guess almost like probably coming up on a year now soon um but yeah i, I never had a, the reason to go buy it but it always looks like a cool wood to work with yeah it feels yeah. a lot like oak but it's it's far more consistent in color than oak yeah Whereas with oak, you can get this broad, broad range of colors. Yeah. Um, with ash, it's it's kind of easy to to work with that way. Well, it also seems interesting. Like I guess this emerald ash borer. That's uh, like I hear the ash tree could be going the the way of the the chestnut, uh, according to some of the stuff Shannon said on Wood Talk, hmm. which would be sad because it's a good, good, relatively inexpensive hardwood. So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's Ash Shannon. It's it's crazy. Like people used to just how much walnut people used to use. Like they used to use it for everything. It wasn't even like a fancy wood. You know, fifty years ago, it was it's crazy. Yeah. Times have changed. I know. I know. It's uh, it's kind of interesting. Luckily, I love walnut, so <laughs> good to have a whole pile of it. Yeah. Um, all right. So here's kind of a random one: metal and grain. Uh, what day other than Tuesdays do we like to post uh, videos? Uh, so James does three a week, but if I missed a Tuesday, it was my second choice. So um, so I personally don't know how much day of the week matters realistically. I think, you know, I think there are successful YouTube creators in this space who post on pretty much every day of the week. So, you know, Jay Bates, I think, posts on Sunday maybe. Laura mm -hmm. Kampf posts on Sunday. Uh, Bob usually posts on third or on Tuesday. Um, David posts on Thursday. So I, I think consistency is way more important than specific day. Like this week, I just wasn't done with the Adirondack chairs yesterday. There was no way I was going to get them done. So I put out the video today, you know, so today being Wednesday. Uh, so I really don't think it's that critical. Um, what, then what it also, it varies greatly channel to channel. Um, and what your audience is you know like for me i have a lot of retirees and so you know putting things out at weird times for them is not a huge issue but I mean, in comparison i put them out every tuesday every thursday and every saturday my saturday videos always do better hmm. i mean unless it's a unless it's a dumb thing um but that's right off the bat um you let it sit for a week or two and they all kind of flatten out yeah. So it really isn't. Uh, it, you know, if you're if you're really going after that initial boost of who's watching it, um, you're trying to do it when most people are at home. Um, yeah. But you know, give it a give it a week or two, and that's going to disappear because everyone likes to go back and watch the people they like. Yeah. Well, I, I just figured that the... most people that work jobs don't do anything on at their jobs. Like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Same. Yeah, and as somebody who used to work at a job, that's when I watched a lot of YouTube. Yeah, I, I mean, every job I've ever had, you pretty much you're you're given you know two hours of work to do, and then you're paid to stand around and look busy the rest of the day. So yeah, 
that's not everybody, but that's just been my experience with em employment. So, yep. Yeah, no, I totally, totally agree. But, you know, again, I think most of the traffic on YouTube comes from uh, either search or them suggesting your video from other videos. And then also a lot of it comes from the traffic you can drive to the video. So whether that's sharing on other platforms like Instructables and Reddit and social media or, uh, you know, your email newsletter or whatever, that's, uh, I think that's all part of it. So I really don't think day of the matter, day of the week matters as much as consistency. So, all right. Um, let's see here. So question for the three of us from the duck. Uh, how would you mill up a log of wood without power tools? James, or I mean, Johnny. <laughs> yeah, I would not. So <laughs> I, would, I would get a box and I would mail it to Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I'd forward it on to Matt Cremona and uh, he could do it without my power tools. <laughs> and eventually it would end up in James' shop. Yeah. James? You you have I mean you bought that fro when you were in Asheville. Have you used that thing yet? Oh yeah. I actually did a video on it a while ago. Oh, was that yeah, you used it in the free lumber video? Yeah, I, I mentioned it in there. Um I want to do a video on it eventually here, but I haven't gotten around to it. Yeah. But um well yeah, you can you can always um rive the wood. In other words, split out wedges lengthwise and then plane those wedges to the shape you want. Um that's the most difficult way, but you end up getting the best quality wood humanly possible that way. Um, the the traditional method, though, is you take a handsaw and you cut it lengthwise. Um, I, I know that that sounds absolutely crazy and it's slow, but it works. Um, yeah. And if you make a larger frame saw, like a Rubo style frame saw, you can actually do some fairly large logs. And if you get really big logs, then you get a second person. And you put the log up in the air over your head um, on a support somehow uh, or dig a trench and you go down underneath the log. And then one person above pulling the saw up and one person below pulling the saw down. And you can mill away. <laughs> it's actually a lot of fun hmm. and, uh, and, and extremely rewarding, but a lot of work. Yeah, what do they call that? Like the saw pit or something like pit that? Saw. Pit saw. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Yeah, it's Good. always... Uh, esoteric woodworking knowledge there yeah, the, the person on the top does the most work because they're lifting the saw back up every time yeah but the person on the bottom gets the sawdust dumped on them with every saw, saw stroke Ugh, that sounds absolutely <laughs> miserable man that's why they have a um so are you a large... top or a bottom <laughs> <laughs> all right family back on topic <laughs> so <yourself>. madeline grain <laughs> asks talk about dewalt so I guess let's recap the event real quick, Zach. Um, Do what? Okay. <laughs> I mean, it was a great weekend. You know, to me, the highlight, of course, was seeing all the other YouTube guys, uh, you know, Jamie Duressa, Bob Claggett, Dave Bichudo, Brad Rodriguez. Uh, it was a, uh, it was a great, great weekend. Uh, it was, yeah, you? it was a good time. Nashville's a cool city. That's the first time I've been there. And uh, yeah, it was, there's, it was, Never a dull moment, and uh, I think I had the best barbecue of my life there. So uh, it was a good time. Yeah, yeah. The I think one of the like surprising highlights was the rodeo. I think we were both yeah. kind of shocked at how awesome that was. It was the you know the PBR like the top professional bull riding people, and dude, it was intense and like fast paced, and it was awesome. Like, yeah, I mean, I we obviously aren't huge in the bull <laughs> riding world. Um, no. I don't think we knew anything really about it going into it. No. And it was super entertaining. No, so. It's great for somebody with like super ADD. Cause like the, the maximum length of a rodeo, like of a bull riding session is like eight seconds. So it's like eight seconds. And if you make it that far, it's like amazing. And then you have to figure out how to get the heck off of this enormous bull without it getting destroyed. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, is like I didn't realize it was like a head to head like bracket thing and it was pretty cool. So yeah. Um, but yeah, DeWalt's got some awesome tools coming out. I mean I I have like I already own a couple of the ones that I was like most excited about. Like their their uh cordless track saw and the cordless brad nailer we used in Oklahoma. Um I think that 
uh, flooring nailer is really cool. That's I'm, I'm considering adding hardwood to my attic, and that might be the ticket. No, I no I thought the um, I thought it was interesting because all of their tools are starting to look like assault rifles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, they they have some intense styling. Yeah, they're uh especially like their concrete drills and stuff. I mean Oh man. Zombie like, apocalypse happens, go grab all the DeWalt masonry tools because well, my I, word. You could, you could seriously you could grab one of those concrete drills and like go rob banks with it. Like people would be like, <laughs> This guy's from the future and he's gonna kill me. Yeah. They're yeah, they, they're crazy they look looking. Pretty intense. But I was actually I was watching those because I didn't know. I mean, the event was interesting, but it seemed like it catered, the majority of it catered to people who run like giant um, construction crews that like build, you know, sc- probably not skyscrapers, but big, big buildings, yeah, you know, you, contractors you and stuff. But I mean, that's the interesting thing about DeWalt is like so much of their stuff is based on the like the industry and the job site. Like we, mm-hmm. I think we are not the typical use case for DeWalt. No, that's, tools. What, that's what I'm getting at. Uh, so there's a lot of cool stuff, but a lot of it didn't directly pertain to us. Like they have Bluetooth essentially GPS on the tools um, yeah. so that you can find them and figure out where they're at and yeah. turn them on and turn them off remotely. It's like, uh, uh, what's the thing that's, that they put that on the cars? Dangerous. Yeah. It's like, uh, what, yeah, what is that called? Low Jack. Yeah. Yeah. It's like low Jack for tools. It um, is very cool. Much. I mean, it's a, uh, you know, it, it's really interesting to see how all this stuff is progressing and, um, you know, how, how technology is changing, especially the construction industry, because, the the 3D modeling capabilities are pretty amazing. Like they were showing how you can lay out like all of the conduit, let's say for the electrical for an entire building with like the click of a button and it does all the load testing and, you know, completely lays it out perfectly. tells you exactly, you know, how long of like the threaded rod pieces need to be and what type of fasteners and just stuff that I'm sure used to take weeks, you know, months. I mean, it just, I like the ridiculous tedium of planning some of this stuff out just made my head hurt. Did you see their flex volt toilet snake? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I got to give me one of those. Uh, I got to give me one of those. uh, One of the things I thought that was kind of cool was um, stuff that you don't really see from them a whole lot. So like that concrete stuff, um, they have a tool that essentially it's for like pipe, hanging and i don't know probably for big buildings when you're like hanging pipe from below a, a concrete floor or something yeah but i was looking at that and i'm like man it just looks awesome like the pipe hanging from there so i was like man i want to get one of those and like build a bench or a table that's like held together yeah. by like some sort of steel conduit or just the, just looking at these these things that are giant industrial applications and trying to figure out how to build like studio furniture out of them that's kind of i was like daydreaming most of the time but it was it was a cool deal that's all i have to say about that it was they they do a good job i went last year and you know i was i was shocked how they were going to be able to you know uh, top flex volt which was a pretty huge announcement last year i don't think there'd ever been a cordless table saw before so um they they did a great job i mean they're you know they, they always are coming out with cool stuff and um, you know, I'm certainly not wanting this to be a DeWalt ad, but, uh, you know, they make good tools. So I use a lot of their stuff. Um, cool. So, uh, Ryan Petzold in the chat, uh, asks as a maker who sells projects, what would you say is the most in demand or best selling project? So it depends on whether you're talking about furniture or smaller craft items. Um, for furniture, I'd say tables of almost any kind. Dining tables, coffee tables, end tables. Seems like everybody needs more tables, and they're very easy to build, generally speaking. So they can uh, be very, yeah, they can yes. be very simple. Yeah, yeah. I. Uh, what about you guys? In my world, it's the workbench. Yeah, because I know a lot of people who will buy every workbench, every workbench plan they find. Not to ever build them, but because they love collecting workbenches. <laughs> I, I would I, I would agree with uh, I, I agree uh, with the tables. I, I feel like I build 
they're just it's so accessible i mean everybody every house has tables in them and they're usually the focal point or the gathering point of and usually whatever design you get you can scale it up and scale it down to make it in table or coffee table or dining room table yep yeah yeah no it's uh tables are great i mean that's you know if you're a furniture builder that's the type of item like you could almost stock in tables and you know wouldn't have to worry about them selling i don't think because i think they'd they'd go pretty quick um, if you're into smaller stuff, I think cutting boards are probably a really good one. Um, very easy to make, very good use of scrap. Um, usually you can go to like cabinet shops and things like that and get their off cuts and build hundreds of thousands of dollars of cutting boards for free for literally nothing in material costs outside of glue. So, um, I think cutting boards are, especially around the holidays and that kind of stuff, especially, if you want to invest in something like a CNC or a laser cutter where you can customize them, then you can kill it with wedding gifts and things like that. It's a uh, uh, cutting board is pretty huge. Or those bottle opener plaques with a magnet magnet underneath. Yeah. Yeah. Basically just go search on Etsy and you'll see like what there are a million <laughs> of, of everything. And uh, yeah, I think that's uh, pretty good. All right. Fred McIntyre recommendations for achieving a durable painted finish on wood yeah don't (laughs) (laughs) uh i know there's a delay here so i'm gonna ask it right now but like what kind of use like what kind of durability are you talking about that that would be my question yeah i mean so to me so when i've talked to general finishes about it basically they recommend a top coat over pretty much any paint. So, you know, they sell their version of milk paints and that kind of stuff. And and their milk paint is actually really an awesome product. Um, But you can put that on and then apply a couple of coats of top coat, just like you would on bare wood, you know, something like high performance, if you want it to be completely clear, like Endurovar, if you want it a little bit of amber. And that's going to give you a much, much better protection than just straight up paint. Uh, It's not going to flake off as easily. You're not going to chip as easily um so that would probably be my recommendation uh, what well the other thing is the the paint you choose because um different paints have different things that are intended for i mean most paints out there are designed for um a, a sealed drywall yep and if you get a drywall paint and try and put it on wood the wood expands and contracts and breathes and that paint is not going to last on there yep uh, so you, you really got to choose paints and or colored stains, uh, which uh, if you're going on wood, I would definitely suggest going and looking at colored stains with an opaque colored stain that ends up looking just like paint, but it's designed to absorb into the wood um, and, and sit there. So it's you really got to look at what you're getting and what is it what is it designed to adhere to. Yep, definitely. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's contingent upon, uh, you know, the, the the use. Is it going to be outside? Is it going to be? Is it a what what kind of use? Is it going to be a tabletop? Yeah. Is it going to be something that you're sitting? Is it abrasive? Are you going to be sitting in it? Yeah, that sort of thing. There's 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 a, you know, different uh, different finishes for different applications, and there's a lot of good ones out there. So there's there's something that'll work. Yeah, yeah, I think for indoor furniture. I think a milk paint topped with a top coat would be a pretty pretty good bet, regardless of, of what it is. I think that'd be uh, hold up pretty well. All right. Well, uh, we're going to save this last question. What is our favorite woodworking TV show for our after show, which will be after the next couple segments? So, uh, yeah, thank you to the live chat for all the awesome questions. If you guys want to join us, that's Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about what we've been watching or reading or whatever. James, how about you, man? Um, I actually uh, came across uh, Dan the Maker Man. Uh, well, he, I've been watching his stuff for a while, and he actually made my marking knife, the one I really like to use. Hmm. Um, just ergonomic, feels great. He made it from a, a saw blade. Um, but he had this scrap of steel that he decided to make another mi- marking knife off, knife off of. And rather than putting a wooden handle, he put a brass handle on it. And it was just, it was one of those aha moments of absolute gorgeousness. Um, just seriously, seriously beautiful, beautiful work. Um, 
and I want to try and make something like that now. So yeah, definitely check him out. Um, Dan, the maker man and, uh, his most recent knife build. Very, very cool. Cool. Zach, you got one. I haven't been watching anything, but I don't want to waste this time and not, uh, tell people to go watch somebody. So, uh, when I met Tim Sway in New York, he was a cool dude. So if you guys don't watch Tim Sway, check out his channel. He's, he's a good guy. His current project is a Helix. That is, yeah, sweet. that thing is pretty cool. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Nice. So mine is so uh, after the episode last week, uh, before I had to wake up early and drive over to Nashville, I stayed up way too late watching this video. Uh, it's a stereo chroma channel, which actually Pat Lapp has been featured on a couple times. Uh, they make incredibly, incredibly high quality videos. Uh, definitely longer format typically, uh, but it's this video on making a guitar and it's on uh, Greenfield guitars, super, super high end boutique guitars. I think their guitars start at like 10 grand a piece, uh, acoustic guitars. And they have an hour long, basically a documentary on uh, start to finish them building one of these acoustic guitars. It is absolutely amazing. I highly, highly recommend it for anybody who's a woodworker go watch the video. It's got like 1.6 million views or something ridiculous. So plenty of people have already seen it, but you know, I would love to build an acoustic guitar at some point in my life. And this video just <laughs> really, really it kind of intimidates me because the, the amount of detail is insane. Like some of the uh, inlays and, and, you know, just the crazy stuff that, that happens on an acoustic guitar that is not present on an electric guitar. Um, so, Definitely highly recommend that. Um, so I guess let's finish it off with our favorite tool of the week. James, you got something? Yes. Uh, my Veritas custom hand plane. Mm. Um, this is, I actually had a couple conversations this week on what hand plane should I buy? And from people who have, you know, I have the money, I want to get a good quality tool. I want something to last me for a lifetime. And usually I'm going to say either the Lee Nielsen um, hand plane or the Veritas Custom. And, but the one thing that's really cool about the Veritas Custom planes is they, they've kind of rethought hand planes from the ground up. I mean, it's, it's not like any other hand plane. Um, it, it, it's just, it's, it's adjustable. It's customizable. You can get different grips. You can get different knobs. You can set it at different angles. Um, the ability to open and close the mouth on a traditional bevel down plane uh, it's just, it is a joy to use, and it is a phenomenally good plane. Um, now, you're going to be spending money for it. it is, it's a pricey plane, uh, but just every time I get to use it, it's, it's, it's an absolute pleasure. And, uh, nice. Yeah, I could go on and on with that. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, Zach, you got one, or you want me to go? Uh, yeah, I got one. This is actually, I'm going to pick... Where's the chat window? I have like 20 windows open. So, okay, there we go. Um, I'm going to pick this. I ordered a uh, Oppenel, you know, oh, the Oppenel. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's just the number six. They're like, they're really cheap and effective. Like they're, yeah, I have like three of those in my, <laughs> in my kitchen. So yeah, the number six is the one that I have. It's really small. It can fit in your pocket. Um, I actually just keep it on my desk. And uh, yeah. it's not really, I don't think I would call, I mean, I, I've used it in the shop, but it's more like, it's just like the perfect desk knife. Like when you need to open packages or like, totally, you know, stuff that you do with a knife. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's good for that. And they're, they're cheap. So I got, yeah, they actually, I awesome. got like a walnut one on Amazon. It was like 15 bucks. I think I'll throw nice. it. The, the yeah. They're here. incredibly cheap too. And, and seemingly decent quality steel. So they're totally sharpenable and maintain a decent edge. So, um, yeah, yeah. it's not really um, like a, yeah, not really a shut so much a shop tool. It's just something that if you need, you need to have a, you need to have a knife on your desk and this is totally. a good one for that. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Well, I've got a couple, uh, first is this Rockler HVLP sprayer. Zach you used to have this, right? No, I, I, I have a you have the woodcraft one. What did you have before your current setup? Yeah, I had a woodcraft one, just okay. a forty dollar oh, one. Okay, yeah. So the Rockler one actually kind of impressed me. Uh, it's a, it's made by I think Earlex, 
uh, which obviously is pretty, they make really nice uh, sprayers, but um, very simple to use and really low kind of barrier to injury for HVLP. I think they're like 150 bucks. So um, if that's something you're interested in, it comes with two needles, ones that works really well for like poly and uh, lacquer and, you know, thinner things like that. And then one that works well for paint and kind of thicker stuff like that. So I uh, definitely recommend that. Um, you know, obviously I've used everything from a $300 HVLP to like a $1,000 HVLP. So it compared pretty favorably, actually. Um, I was I was kind of impressed. So definitely check that out. And then also H&T Gordon sent me one of their smoothing planes, um, not one of their uh, regular kind of non-adjustable planes. They sent me the, I think they call it the A55 model where it's got the little, uh, you know, knob to adjust the the blade uh, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, beautiful, beautiful little plane and excited to kind of incorporate that a little more. I have their block plane and a couple of their spoke shaves and uh, wanted to kind of round out the collection. So they sent over the smoothing plane, which yeah, the A55 smoothing plane with the high speed steel blade. And then also their uh, three quarter inch shoulder plane. So I'm pretty excited to, to mess around with those. I, I don't really have a dedicated smoothing plane. So um, that'll be, that'll be nice. And it's just their stuff. They make it out of really cool Australian hardwood. Their quality just, is phenomenal. Dude, it, it's ridiculous. And like they kind of specialize in really high. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, dude, they're handmade. I mean, that's like, yeah. they are made by um, like a couple of people there in Australia and uh, super high wow. angle. So really great for figured stuff. And uh, yeah. So I, I need to figure out my sharpening system. Cause of course, no like American sharpening system works with like a 55 degree bevel angle. So I need to uh, either freehand it or, I don't know, figure something else out, but we'll see. I got to talk to James off in, air. In a pinch, you can even like, I've, I've before I bought my sharpening system, like you can just take a straight stick of wood, cut it to on the detent on your miter saw to 55 degrees. And at least that'll get you like, hmm. you can kind of hold that block and get your hand mm-hmm. in that position. You can even slide the wood, but I mean, you'll plug up your, your stone faster with that, but at least it'll get you... If you set it there and do a few like strokes, you can kind of keep yeah. your hand at the right angle. That did not sound right. <laughs> I actually know a guy who, who does that, um, but he makes the block of wood, puts a, a uh, well, basically a groove in it that straddles the, the oh, stone yeah. he's working on and then um, screws on wheels on either side so it rolls across Interesting. it. Interesting. Huh. Interesting. So it rolls on yeah. the table on either side of the stone. Oh, yeah, I got to figure out sense. my sharpening setup because, man, I'm I'm behind for sure. But so once you learn how to do it freehand, it's just everything suddenly clicks. It, it, and that's what I want to do, I think. Here, it's just it's yeah. the only way to learn it is to... Because for me, it's sheer laziness and <laughs> wanting speed. Yeah, so but once you learn how to do it, it's jig, so much faster. Yeah, any jig is not going to have speed yeah. on its hand. So... Yeah. Like I know, watch I watched William Walker's video today on sharpening hand planes, and it seems like a pretty good system. Um, so I might I might give that a shot. So anyway, I think that will do it for the main show. So thanks to everybody for listening. Again, if you want to really help out the show for free, go leave us a five star rating on iTunes. Just look up Crafted Podcast. Uh, that is super super helpful. And uh, if you want to support the show for a couple bucks. Uh, go check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash crafted podcast. Got some really cool rewards over there, including the oh. after show, which we're about to move into. Is that hey, some dad? Yeah. Is it, uh, well, somebody wanted me to post the link to that knife that I recommended. I posted it in the Facebook group, but it won't allow me to post links in the chat. Oh, uh, put it in the show notes. I'll flip it over. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. So yeah, uh, if you are on, if you're a Patreon supporter, you can join us in the after show. Also live listeners, you get to join us for free. So uh, stay tuned for that. And until next week, happy building everybody. Thanks guys. All right, let's get into the after party. So we've got a couple questions 
Um, one that I think is a pretty good one. Uh, what is our favorite TV woodworking show? And I think this is probably very guessable uh, based on our individual personalities. But uh, James, I'm guessing yours would be Woodwright Shop. Um, yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. very anticlimactic. <laughs> Well, the yeah, there really isn't a. I don't know. I, I I never grew up watching any woodworking TV. Huh. Yeah. Other than like uh, Tool Time, I guess I, I would have to say oh, Tool, Tool Time. Is probably my favorite. Tim Allen. <laughs> yeah, of course. That's classic. Home Improvement, man. Yeah, that is pretty good, actually. That's uh. That's yeah, Home Improvement. There's a name. Yeah. That's that's that is uh not one that I would have thought of immediately, but that is a good one. Zach, how about you? What's your favorite woodworking TV show? Um, mine is actually the one that you suggested that James would like. Wood, the wood right shop. shop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's yeah, really it's awesome. just I, I, he's he caters to my attention span. It's <laughs> like each show has like just so much going on. There's a he's it, there's never a dull moment. Like if it were a YouTube video, I wouldn't skip forward on it. I guess. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, and, and I like the fact that like his shows cover different topics. Like they'll have one on blacksmithing, and they'll have one on, you know, old machinery, and it's just it's a it's a cool show. Yeah, yeah, he only lives like an hour and a half for me, I think. So I I would like to go. He does classes like a uh, week long classes. I, I would like to go take one of those now that I actually have a job that would allow me to do it. Uh, That'd be really talk to cool. the boss, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, that would be uh, that would be awesome. Um, so mine is probably Woodworks with David Marks. I think. I mean, Norm. So I grew up watching Norm. My dad is a huge uh, New Yankee Workshop fan. Um, I totally remember watching this old house in New Yankee Workshop very frequently as like a eight year old. So uh, that I would definitely uh, recommend. To anybody who's you know into woodworking, if you've never seen oh, the yeah. workshop, because it's been off air. I mean, if you're new to this, you you really could miss it. Um, so definitely go back and and look at that because man, Norm is he's a trip, man. Just his accent alone is worth watching the show. Um, yeah, the, you know. the crazy thing about uh, oh, sorry, going back, uh, um, um, Roy Underhill. The crazy thing about the way he does videos is he shoots a 23 minute video nonstop. Yeah. And every time oh. it's one take. Yeah. No, you can tell because I mean, he like hurts himself and it's so anytime there's a mistake, his like finger is covering up some weird mistake in the wood or yeah, uh, the board is turned slightly. So you can't quite see what was done. <laughs> yeah. Or, or he's bleeding, you know, yes, it's yeah, there's like... blood everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's been doing it now 31 seasons and still going. Yeah. It's crazy. It's pretty cool. Good information every time still. Yeah. Well, if you've never seen uh, Woodworks by with, with David Marks, oh, yeah. uh, definitely he's like, you know, I think Mark Spagnolo's idol. So if that tells <laughs> you anything, you know, David is the highest of high-end woodworker. I think now he's like super into really crazy turning, like uh, massive hollow forms and stuff like that. Um, but that dude is incredibly meticulous and – it's insane that that stuff was ever on TV, honestly, because it is the most inaccessible woodworking projects you've ever seen. It's like crazy well, veneering TV, and, ch- TV shows. Yeah, true, true. But yeah, I mean, like his shop, like nobody would have been able to replicate that stuff at home, like unless they were like you know somebody like with a shop like mine or something. You know, it just uh, that's a super super niche audience. So, but the techniques you can pick up from that show are really incredible. So. Um, and he's just really mellow kind of dude. It's uh, kind of fun to watch him compared to, I mean, Roy, you got to be kind of energetic to, <laughs> to be in the mood for, for Woodwright shop. So um, that's not something you watch while you're trying to go to bed. Definitely not. <laughs> he's like all pumped up. Even the intro music, man, as soon as you hear that, that like jig, you know, you're like, you're ready. It's like watching a race. You're just waiting for something to crash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. That's funny. Cool. Well, we got one more from Metal and Grain. So he asked if we have any tips on making round resin molds. He wants to cover a round table in resin. 
So I don't think we fully understood this question. So I guess what my question is, does he want this to be like a layer of glass where it's like removable or does he want it just completely coated in resin? Because if it's just coated, just pour it over there and surround it in tape and you're good to go, you know? Or even if if you get like a a thick bar top epoxy, oh yeah, keep the table level and then it will cover the top and drip over the sides. And then when it's done, you just cut all the drips off the bottom. Yeah, super simple. You end up with like an eighth inch thick, perfectly glass smooth, as long as the table itself was level to begin with. Yeah, yeah. I I I don't think there's any real reason to make a mold unless you, as I said, want it to be like a pane of glass where you can take it on and off but in which that, case then you'd probably want to get a paint of glass yeah just use glass because resin is not that would be a royal pain in the butt of course if you to were to try clear. and make one you would probably want to make it with a pane of glass yeah okay so he just said in the in the chat he wants to coat it so yeah uh, i would totally just go look bar up top. bar top epoxy there's a website mm-hmm. that sells bar top epoxy you can buy it at any of the big box stores it comes yeah. in like a gallon mix kit yeah usually the key is to do it in two steps, brush on the first coat to kind of seal the wood to, to kind of mitigate any bubbles and leaks. And then, you know, form some sort of border, usually with tape or something like that. And then do a pour and, and really read the instructions because some of these epoxies, you're, you're really usually only supposed to do like a quarter inch of depth at a time. So I don't know how deep you're wanting, but don't like, don't pour like an inch deep of epoxy because Usually it'll create a crazy <laughs> amount of heat and probably either crack or totally or light mess on up fire. your piece. Yeah, yeah. So don't do that. Pour it in stages, and then use like a little heat gun or a propane torch to uh, pop the bubbles uh, right after you pour it, and you should be good. And if you have any cats, then I wouldn't do that because that's why I've never done anything like that because I know that I'd end up with cat hair in mine. So uh, <laughs> just in- unavoidable. So. All right, well, that'll do it. So thanks to all of our Patreon supporters, uh, and thanks to all of our live listeners. You guys are awesome. Till next time, happy building. See ya. Thanks, guys. We're all just sitting